Hey guys, welcome back. Joseph Ballmer here. You may have seen some other videos on this channel about this car I have behind me, but it's a, if you haven't, it's a 2011 Chevy Malibu with a 2.4. And what in the hell is my camera doing? Anyway, this video is just the start to the following playlist of 2-2-2-4 timing sets. And in this video, I'm going to enlighten you, enlighten you to a few of the things that I have learned that can be very important for retiming one of these cars or setting the timing on one of these cars, okay? Now, do me a favor, please share this video because this video, I'm sure, will help somebody somewhere, all right? And as always, please subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, throw them in the comment section, rate it when it's all over with. You know, the whole nine yards. Now, okay, two twos and two fours. It does not matter whether they're VVT or non-VVT engines, they all use the exact same timing chain. The chain is the same number of links, the timing links are in the same spot. The sprocket diameters, whether they're VVT sprockets or non-VVT sprockets, are the same. Okay, the only difference in timing kits is some of the components you get in the kit. Okay, and that depends on whether it's a VVT or non-VVT engine. Not a big deal. Beyond that, now that is, let me rephrase, that is naturally aspirated. I'm not sure about the uh, SS, the turbocharged engines. I'm not 100% sure on those. I haven't dealt with those. Now, beyond that, the reluctor wheels, which are back here on the tail end of the camshaft, okay, they are on the opposite end of your timing sprockets. The reluctor wheels, if the engine gets hot, can move. Now, to check the rear reluctor wheel and make sure it's in the correct spot, you set the valves on cylinder four on the exhaust cam to max lift, and then this center section of the upper head surface should be perfectly flat with one of the flat faces of the reluctor wheel. If you put a ruler on them, they should match up. Now there's a little bit of variance because you have to keep in mind your valve does stay at maximum lift for a few degrees of, of, of rotation. So I don't know what the actual duration of max lift on this engine is for these cams. I talked to a tech line guy today and he wasn't even sure. But you do have a few degrees of variance. So now if you have a P0016 or P0017 code for intake or exhaust cam, P0016 is intake, P0017 is exhaust. If you get one of those codes for not being in sync with the crank, in order to set that code you have to be more than 10 degrees out of time with the crank. Okay? So, like I said, to check the, re the exhaust reluctor wheel, you set it max lift cylinder 4, and you should have one of the reluctor surfaces should be parallel with the upper head surface at the center of the head, at the center of rear of the head. On the intake side, you set number one to max lift. Same spot on the head, you should have a reluctor surface perfectly matched up with the head. Okay? E e double check your, if you didn't have, if you're not changing a head, it doesn't matter. If you're putting a new head on, double check, because this was a reman head and they missed it. Now, if it is off, you can actually use a brass drift and drift the reluctor wheels around. That's what we did on this one to get it where it needs to be. And I did compare it to the old camshaft to verify that it is in as close to the exact same location as possible. Now, another thing about these engines, if you pull the head, you just have to replace the head with cylinder number one at top dead center. It does not matter. It could be top dead center intake or top, or excuse me, top dead center compression or top dead center exhaust stroke. It does not matter. Okay, the, the gear inside the engine or the, the uh, Hall effect wheel inside the engine only tells the crank sensor that it's at top dead center number one. It doesn't tell it which stroke it's on. That's up to the cam sensors to tell the computer what stroke the engine is on. So you cannot time, if you remove the head, you, you can't time the crank 180 degrees out. If you leave the head on, you have to time, you have to set your timing 
with number one exhaust at top dead center. You don't want to be at top dead center on compression, you want to be at top dead center on exhaust to set the timing limits. So, um, those are just a few of the things I've learned. If you watch the videos, you're going to see some other things, um, like actually how to reset um, or deactivate the timing chain tensioner if you have to take the timing set back apart and, and do something with it because you have to insert the tensioner deactivated so there is a procedure to deactivate the tensioner. I've done it about a half dozen times on this engine right now because this one's being a pain in the butt. Uh, also, your VVT cam actuators or, or your cam phasers on the front of the engine. You should not, if you put a 24 millimeter wrench on the cam flats, you should not be able to move the, the cam back and forth without the sprocket turning. If it does, that phaser needs to be replaced. Now, I've been throwing a P0017 code repeatedly. I've replaced both phasers. Just so happens we think that the replacement phaser for the exhaust cam is bad. So, I'm going to replace it again. Uh, which means I have to retime the engine. Not a big deal. One of the videos I'm going to show you some tricks to actually retiming one of these if you get it together and you have to pull it back apart and retime it for some reason. It's not a big deal. It's actually pretty easy. Um, what else am I missing here? Guys, I'll be honest, it's a, that's a few of the most important things that I can think of right off the top of my head here. Uh, now, anytime you have a timing set failure, I highly, highly, highly recommend replacing your VVT solenoids that slide down through the cam cover, which is sitting over here. Uh, they, they slide down through and they're right behind your upper timing guide. I highly recommend replacing these because they have screens on them and the screens, matter of fact, give me a second, the screens can end up looking like this, where they're completely packed full of metal. So you definitely, even if you don't replace them, need to pull them out and check them. But if they get packed up like that, I would highly recommend replacing them because they could have metal down on the inside of this and you don't want any of that crap released back into your engine. Uh, you're going to have a hard enough time getting it out. And if you have a timing set failure that results in this, you need to pull the oil pan off and clean it out. Now if you're just doing a timing chain replacement, as preventative maintenance and all your timing guides look good you don't have any broken or, or excessively worn guides or sprockets you don't have to worry about pulling the oil pan but if you have any broken guides or any excessive wear you need to replace pull the oil pan off clean everything out and put it back on because like this engine had a, the front guide had broken the upper guide here the the material the nylon material on the guide was gone. It wasn't even there and the guide was bent up out of the way from that chain slapping up and down. So I dropped the oil pan and ended up finding all kinds of guide chunks in the oil pan plus I cleaned out all the metal, the fine metal from the timing set that was sitting down in the bottom of the pan, got it nice and clean before I put it back on because some of that metal is so fine it will actually pass through the oil filter. We actually had one of these engines at a cobalt that actually had so much metal in it, it didn't bend any valves, but it had so much metal in it, even after dropping the pan and cleaning it, there was so much fine metal that would pass through the oil filter. In order to help catch more of it, I took one of these shop towels, cut it, wrapped it around the oil filter, zip tied it on, and dropped it back in to catch so that this filter, and we just, we didn't take it out and drive it, we just ran it in here in the shop on a rack. But that shop towel would catch a lot of the fine metal particles would get stuck in the shop towel that would otherwise pass through the filter, plus it would help any of the larger metal particles that might have made it through the shop towel but gotten stopped at the filter to hold them into the filter, since this is a cartridge filter, not a canister, where all that crap would settle to the bottom in a canister filter. So, well, like I said, those are just a few tips. I hope this helps you out. Please share this video. Watch the playlist. You can skip through it. You can pick through it. But you, we're going to be, I'm going to show you timing sets on two twos and two fours. And I've done a couple different videos on these. So please, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask me. Um, I'll be more than happy to answer them if I can. And 
Hopefully this helps you guys. Thanks for watching. Don't be afraid to get out there and get your hands dirty. You might have a little fun doing it. And if you have a job like this that is just beating you up, keep at it because I'm telling you right now, I have learned more about these two twos, two fours on this job in particular than I have in the other 8, 10, 12 timing sets on these that I've done. Because this is the one that has not gone right. And guess what? I've learned how to diagnose a lot of minor problems with these engines that I didn't even know about.